Aloha everyone, welcome to Lion Arboretum's Facebook Live. I'm Hadley Anderson, I am the Education Specialist here at the Arboretum, and we're here today with Devin Gordon, who is one of our most recent hires here in our Market Propagation Lab. And we're so grateful for you to join us today, Devin. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to be here. Excellent. So, Devin's going to take us through a couple of the steps of the micropropagation process. Actually, all the steps, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Great. And uh, what specimen will we, will we be using today? Will today we're working with uh, Phyllostegia hispida, mm -hmm. which is our native mint. And it doesn't actually contain any of the mint pheromones that uh, are found in uh, the normal mint you would use in the kitchen. But this uh, species is endemic to Molokai, and there are actually only three left in the wild. And that's a pretty common uh, trait that a lot of our plants here in the lab have, is mm -hmm. that there's only a handful left in the wild, and we're really trying to keep them propagated here and keep them, uh, keep them alive so we can try and prevent any type of species loss. Yeah, and eventually they also go into when they get big enough, we can put them back into their native habitat sometimes. Yep. That's that's the main goal. We're we'll working on it and we do send some plants out and that's why we have it here so we can eventually, once there's enough habitat, we can send these plants into the wild once again. Excellent. So this is also all part of the Hawaii Rare Plant Program, which is run over here uh, at Lion Arboretum, part of the University of Hawaii. Uh, in conjunction with our seed lab. So this is our living plants and then we also have the seeds. But these are often plants that can't be propagated by seeds? That's correct. These are uh, plants that produce recalcitrant seeds. So those are seeds that do not uh, tolerate storage as you would see in, a, in an orthodox seed lab. Uh, these plants need to be kept alive through tissue culture. And so that's what we do here in the micropropagation lab. Cool, okay, well, more Let's do it. Excellent. Let's change the angles and we can check it out. So hopefully you can see this here up close. This is our native mint, Phyllostegia hispida. And so we keep it growing in this sealed con in this sealed test tube and it's growing in an auger based growing medium. And so this medium contains all the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium that's required to grow as well as, as well as micronutrients. And it also has a lot of sugar in it for the plant. And so the reason we're working in this uh, box is that it creates a sterile environment for us to work in. And as you can see with this example, this is a contaminated test tube. So this has a fungus infection. So we need to work in a sterile environment because if any single fungus spore touches our media, it's just going to explode and grow like crazy like you see here. And so we need to work very carefully and sterilely under these conditions. So I need to sterilize my tools, which I keep in alcohol. And I dip them in a flame to fully sterilize them. And my work surface is a sterilized paper towel, which we sterilize ourselves in the autoclave. And my other tool is a scalpel, which I also need to sterilize. So I'll remove the plant from the test tube. Is that also sterilizing the outside of the test tube as you bring it out too? Oh, uh, that's exactly right. Just in case there was any type of contaminants that made their way to the mouth of the test tube, we just run it over the flame just to kill off anything that might be there. And so now I'm gonna be taking the apical sections of the plant. And this is similar to how people would take a clone from say like a tomato plant in their garden or in a greenhouse. Oh, you used a word I didn't know, which is apical? Right, apical is the tip of the plant where the area of cell division is occurring. And so that's the area that we want to put into a new test tube so that it can continue uh, growing and grow into a whole new plant. So I'll remove the lower leaves here. So that's a 
a clone that's ready to be put into a new test tube. Okay. And so since uh, we want to propagate this plant, I can take multiple shoots from this one test tube so we can increase the numbers that we have in our lab. So it looks like I'll actually be able to get two plants from the one that we had previously. And so now I have my two cuttings here and I'll put it into a fresh test tube. So I'll do a similar procedure where I'll sterilize the end of the test tube. I'll go ahead and place it inside. So now this will grow roots in time and it'll eventually fill up this entire test tube in about a year. And that's about our timeline for when we work these plants and continue to propagate them about once a year. And the amount of, do the amount of plants that you can get from a single um, specimen vary? Yes, and so this specific species creates uh, quite a few shoots, so it's nice to propagate because it's pretty easy. But some plants, they have a difficult time. Uh, three different techniques, such as using hormones, we can augment the amount of shoots that they will grow. So this plant is done, so I'll just get rid of the excess. And so where we had one, we started with one plant and then we ended up with two. There we go. That's super interesting. And what's one of your favorite um, things about working with these plants? Yeah, one of my favorite things about working with these plants is that a lot of these plants, they're extremely rare. They either are extinct in the wild, they only have a couple left in the wild, so it's, uh, I feel like it's really important work and it's very satisfying to be able to contribute to this program. Excellent. Anything else? Uh, do we have any questions that have popped up anywhere? No? If any of our audience members would have any questions for Devin, this is just one example of one of the type, one of the native, rare native plants that we work with here at the Arboretum. And something that is, of, like you said before, only has three plants out in the wild. But about how many would you say we have or have been able to propagate? Uh, we have probably about 100 individuals, which are from only a handful of uh, accessions. Mm -hmm. So we have a good amount. We've been propagating these for over a decade. So we have a good amount. Fantastic. Great. All right. Uh, do you have a favorite plant that you like to work with or a favorite kind of plant? Uh, I really like the Phyllostegias because they're quite easy to work with. Another plant I like to work with is the Gardenia brighamii, Ooh. which is actually extinct in the wild, but it creates really beautiful flowers that mm -hmm. smell wonderful. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> it smells like a gardenia, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But the flowers are usually a little bit smaller and even the petals are curled on the outside. Yeah. We have a really great example of that in our native garden up here at Lion Arboretum. So, it's saying that, if you do want to come up to Lion Arboretum, we do have reservations available. We're doing daily reservations and you can uh, find that on our website. That is uh, manoa.hawaii.edu slash lion. You can find a link to our Eventbrite so you can come up and see us and see our beautiful uh, native plants that we do have in our garden. Um, <laughs> and thank you so much, Devin, for showing us this micropropagation. Is there anything you'd like to add? I mean, you've had a varied history here with, with Lion Arboretum. You've been able to work your way up from intern to student worker and now full-time employee, so. Yeah, that's right. I, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. I mean, I just graduated in botany and I love lab work. I love working with native plants. So this was really a, an ideal place for me to be. Fantastic. Well, um, awesome. So. If you're out there and you're interested in botany and interested in plants, we do have volunteer positions available, especially with trail maintenance and things like that. So take a look at our website and we'll see you next time 
here at Facebook Live. Thank you so much, Devin. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah.